everyone, I'm Noreen Queen Alexis and welcome back to the channel. Today we are answering all of your questions. If you are concerned about the scratches all over me, it's this little monster's fault. That is my cat Kovu. They are a kitten and they are a menace and I absolutely love him. So today we are answering all of your questions. And if you have a question of your own, be sure to comment in the comment section down below and put the word question before it so I can make it easier to filter and everything. And it just becomes a lot easier for me. So today's question, which I didn't even really read, so we're just going to wing it. Uh, what do you think the galaxy will be like once the Tyranids fully arrive in the Milky Way? Who? okay. Tyranids... Tyranids suffer from some of the worst writing in Games Workshop. Tyranids only lose battles. They barely win, and when they do win, it's against something nameless. Um, they can't even kill the Tau, and it's three high fleets versus the Tau, and they're losing. But, um, oh, okay, so there's a lot to this. One, Tyranids lack faster than light travel. They lack warp travel. They lack most forms of travel. The only way that they have faster than light travel is if they get a planet with a gene stealer cult on it and that gene stealer cult takes over the planet and gets a psychic signal from a nearby Tyranid fleet that could be hundreds of billions of or hundreds of light years away. I don't know the exact distance for that, so please forgive me. But then they have to build a hive ship that augments the gravity of the planet itself to create a jet stream for the Tyranids to slingshot themselves to the planet faster than light. Now, this comes from, I think, the 5th edition Tyranid Codex and is incredibly fucking obvious to any naval personnel, any inquisitor, any orc would be able to see this. Actually, the orcs would probably protect it, wanting the Tyranids to come so they can give them a right proper crumpin. But uh, most races know what this thing is and would destroy it on site. Hell, even Eldar would step in if they know a, a human world is going to die to Tyranids because they'd probably be like, hmm, in 10,000 years, one of our children might actually get their toes stubbed on by a Tyranid. Better kill the entire fleet now or trick it to kill 11 imperial planets because that's the Eldar. They're dumb as shit. Anyway, um, Tyranids are going to take millions of years to get into the Milky Way. So the human race, actually all races in 40k might be extinct by then just via their own innate destructive natures. Uh, orcs might fully manifest as strong enough to kill them easily or they might revert back to uh, brain boys and revert back to corks. Uh, we might have an Eldari Imperium uh, where Eldari and the Imperium has unified. We might have a Tau dominated entire galaxy, though that is unlikely. We might see uh, Dukari raids get so intense and so blood crazy that they start finding ways of torturing Tyranids, which affects the hive mind which then they just start torturing the entire Tyranid line until all of the Tyranids are forced to retreat from the galaxy because it's hurting them too much. Um, there's, there's a billion different answers to this. But I do want to point out one thing. Tyranids technically are not a threat to the galaxy at all. Um, so again, this boils down to really shitty writing on GW's part. And I'm not blaming any one particular writer. It's just Tyranids lack faster than light travel. And their shadow in the warp actually makes them really obvious where they are. Because you could just pulse out sonar into the galaxy, find these areas that are causing astropaths to go a little bit insane, and deal with the Tyranids via Nova Cannon or shooting black holes at them. And yes, the Imperium can shoot black hole guns. They are special shots that are fired by Mechanicus vessels, and I wish I was kidding. They could also just lure the Tyranids to a sun and cause it to go supernova, killing, like, most of the Tyranids. Like, if they just lure them over to a, um, a dormant star or a star that's about to die anyway, 
and lure just billions of Tyranids there, they could potentially just hit the sun and blow it up. Uh, Planet Killer is capable of doing this. Um, a couple of uh, larger vessels are capable, Gloriana class uh, vessels are capable of doing this if they concentrate all of their firepower into the sun. They can cause it to go nuclear, or not nuclear, they can cause it to uh, erupt, which would have... <clears throat> <clears throat> Weird. I like hiccup through that, which would have devastating consequences on Tyranids. Um, they also could just start adapting to fighting Tyranids. Just hit-and-run tactics work really well against Tyranids. What are they going to do? Shoot plasma behind them? Go a little bit faster? And then just sit there going, our main tactic for space b battles is to ram you. I'm not kidding. It, a slow-moving vessel's main combat ability is to ram. These things don't move that fast. And their main strategy is ramming. You could very easily dodge this. You could very easily take care of them. And again, this boils down to GW not knowing what to do with the Tyranids and thus trying to make them this big threat that they're really not. Um, but when Tyranids get into a system, they are a threat because they are an endless swarm of bugs, even though you very easily could just fly an Imperial Navy vessel just outside of its range and just shoot it a couple of times and kill it. But, you know, GW never thinks about that. Like, the entire Battle of McCrack was won by the Imperial Navy, but the Ultramarines took credit for it because they fought on the ground, even though it was thanks to the Imperial Navy that Marinus Calgar had the chance to destroy a super rare and irreplaceable ship, even though the Imperial Navy was winning. But glory to McCrag. Good job, Papa Smurf, you you did it. You get a good boy sticker and a banana sticker. Um, but Tyranids, uh, Tyranids need to be written better. Uh, Tyranids need to be the Zerg. I, I hate to say it, but the Zerg from StarCraft, which is what the Tyranids, uh, the Zerg are based off of the Tyranids. If you guys don't know, there's a whole legal dispute about that where GW, of course, lost because they've lost every single lawsuit they've ever been in. Um, even Chapter House, technically they lost and they just charged up the legal fees until the other opponent couldn't pay for it. Um, but GW has lost everything. But what they could do is make the Tyranids similar to the Zerg and have a Hive Queen, a Norn Queen, if you would, be smart enough to uh, start developing some type of uh, psychic residue or uh, a psychic jet stream through the galaxy itself. Like, if they can sense a psyker, they can actually pull through uh, dimensional rifts or some shit and, like, skim across them. Uh, similar to how, like, the Necrons vibrate their molecules to move faster than light or how the Tau technically skim across the warp before they had warp travel. Um, now the Tau actually do have warp travel, by the way. A lot of people forget that, but yeah. Um, Tyranids are just... The only way they sneak up on things is if you don't have an astropath. So one of the main things that I would do is I'd go to the planet Krieg and start fucking cloning useful units instead of the Kriegers, who are fucking morons. Uh, I would start mass cloning, like, heroes of the Imperium, for one. Like, every single chapter would have a Dante if I was in charge. I'd be like, holy shit, this dude is super experienced and amazing. And he can live very long. Yeah, every chapter gets him. Or Celestine, for instance. I just clone her a million times. But there's no chance of her actually becoming a living saint if you clone her. But I digress. Uh, I would clone astropaths. Like, astropaths would all be clones. Like, why are they not doing this? They're, they're bred almost exclu exclusively in the soul sector. And then they're delivered out. And there's billions of them anyway. Uh, just toss a few in a cloning vent make a, a shit ton of Garys and then put them on ships and then just have them detect all around planets, find Tyranids, call in the fleets, have them deal with the Tyranids, boom, problem solved. Uh, but GW doesn't know how to write space combat. They're really shitty at it. it in an all fairness, a lot of sci-fis are really bad at writing space combats. Star Wars is another good one where it looks fancy, but 
space combat would be extremely far apart and would be someone something along the lines of i think i see a speck reading say that it's this ship okay fire and that's it um and especially being that the the space marines wouldn't be able to miss this not space marines uh the imperium wouldn't be able to miss shots against the tyranids because Trackers on uh, Imperial vessels can track things moving at the speed of light. Um, case in point, in the Mechanicus novels, they tracked a ship moving faster than light. They actually tracked a ship coming out of the warp. Like, they knew exactly where it was going to be and fired and destroyed it as it came out. But um, firing at ships moving faster than light would be easy. Firing at a ship that's moving slower than the speed of light would be even easier because the targeting matrix would be able to lock onto it very quickly and just be like, oh, it's just going right there. Boop, got it. Um, Tyranids also lack shielding. Uh, they're, they're giant potatoes floating through. They're like octopuses floating through uh, the void. And most of the time they're unconscious with only like some systems and travagons walking around them, just carrying uh, a brood of gaunts with them just to unload the gaunts to defend the hive ship's interior. So boarding actions against Tyranid vessels are typically successful. As weird as that is to say, um, there's just, there is a lot to Tyranid vessels that are just flawed. So they would need a hive queen that would know this and that would be able to become a threat to the galaxy using a psychic jet stream, which is what I personally would do, just bend reality around the ship itself so that the ship can now move faster than light, thus becoming a bigger threat to the galaxy, and meaning that most of the Tyranids could get there. But as it stands right now, Tyranids would take billions of years to get, or millions of years to get even past the furthest sectors of space. They would never get to Sol, or Sol would, Sol's son would probably die before they even get there. Just saying. So, um... If the Tyranids fully got to the Milky Way, I think everyone would be ready. I think at the point uh, the Imperium and Eldari would unify, they would have all of the secrets of the Tyranids unlocked, and they would just be killing them easily. Um, yeah, I don't think Tyranids are a threat. And I know, I'm the Norn Queen. They need to make my buggies scarier. Make them scarier, GW. Keep. I'll give you a hug. Anyway, guys, that is it for this question. Uh, if you have a question of your own, be sure to comment in the comment section down below. Be blah, 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 blah. That is what I just said because I lost my train of thought halfway through that sentence. And this is how I get back to my train of thought is I just talk. So if you have your own question, be sure to write question and then followed by the question itself. As always, I'm Nora Queen Alexis. Love you guys. Bye.